Get ready to be addicted, guys. These are so fun and easy. Hey guys, my name is Stacy Ann, and today we're gonna be making this adorable pinwheel ornament. Now, you may have seen the sewn versions of these. They're called Prairie Point Pinwheels, but my team and I wanted to create a no-sew ornament version, and so that's what we're gonna be doing today. But before we start, you need to go and grab yourself this. This is a cheat sheet that I've made for you. It's got two important things on it. First of all, it lays out all the steps for folding each of your fabric pieces. We're gonna go into that in a minute, but this is gonna lay it all out for you in a really easy to reference guide. And second, you'll find this ruler going down the left side, and that's gonna make it easy for you to mark your foam disc. You're not gonna have to do any actual measuring because we've done it for you. All right, so again, this is free. You'll find the link to it right below. So go and grab yourself that, and let's talk about what you will need to make this. So first, you need fabric. I've got 12 five-inch squares here. Now, what's totally cool about these ornaments is that you could use any combo of fabrics and colors that you want. You could do a few colors alternating, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing in this ornament. I've got four colors, and I'm just alternating them around. And I did the same here with this one, except that I only used three different patterns of fabric, which means I needed four of each of those patterns. You could do all 12 in a different fabric. That's what I did here. All 12 of these fabrics, they coordinate, but they are all different from each other. Or you could even do all 12 pinwheels in the same fabric. And that's what I did here. I used the black and white fabric as kind of a backdrop for the flower that I put on top. So like I said, for this one, I'm gonna be using four different fabrics. I need three of each of these four colors in order to get my 12 total pieces. Again, these are five inch squares. You'll need about 100 or so straight pins. I've got a link down below to a place where you can get these by the pound. It's pretty inexpensive for the amount that you get. And the size that I prefer is the size 17 dressmaker pins. You could totally use a different size if that's what you have on hand. This is just the size that I like to use. They go through fabric really easily. And of course, you're gonna need a piece of foam. You need a base for this. And this is a custom foam disc that we've got available in the Ornament Girl shop. You can find a link to that right below. Now, like I said, we did have these discs custom made for us, but if you are looking around and you're trying to find a different brand, that's totally okay. Um, but make sure that you get a soft foam. So you don't want it to be too dense. You want to be able to push pins into it and not kill your fingers, all right? So just keep that in mind. And finally, you will need some embellishments. So I'm gonna be putting a little flower in the center of each side of mine, along with this cute little bumblebee. And I'm gonna be putting a little flower sequin in the middle of my flower, just to give it a little extra pizzazz, okay? And I'm gonna be doing that on both sides, but feel free to have fun with this. You could totally put all sorts of things in the middle of this, like old jewelry and little trinkets, cameos, whatever you can think of is gonna look good in the center of this. This is one of my absolute favorite ones I've ever made, and we've got this pearl and rhinestone center here. In fact, I actually did a cameo on the other side, <laughs> so you could even make them both be different. This one just has a cluster of beads that are pinned right into the middle. And then for the sunflower, I just simply put a black button on there, and it's pinned on with some beads. I just kind of looped some twine behind it, and honestly, you can really get creative and have fun with this part. So you'll also need a couple of tools. You'll need a pair of scissors, a flexible tape measure, something to help you tuck fabric. You're only gonna need this once or twice. And if you don't have a tucking tool like this, you could use a non-serrated butter knife, even a nail file. <laughs> so something that you can use to tuck some excess fabric. And you will need a pen or a pencil. And you'll need an iron. Yes, guys, sorry, there is a little bit of ironing involved. I promise you it's easy. I've got myself this little baby iron that I'm gonna be using. I got this off Amazon. I will try to find it and put a link below for you in case you're interested, but any old iron is gonna do. And you know what? I just realized that I forgot two supplies. Of course, I always forget something. You're gonna need something to hang your ornament with. I'm just using a piece of jute twine. You need like 10 inches or so, depending on how long you want this to be. But you can use um, string, like here I've got some metallic string. You could use ribbon, whatever you want to hang this guy from. And you may need glue, depending on what you're gonna be sticking into the center of your ornament. If it's something that can be pinned, then you're good. But like with these guys, I'm gonna have to glue them and you may find yourself in the same boat. Alrighty, I think we're good. I think we're ready to get going. Don't forget to grab yourself this cheat sheet, all right? You'll find the link right below, free download. 
All right, so there's a couple of different things that we need to do to get this guy made. We need to get our fabric ready, we need to prep the foam disc, and then we have to actually assemble it. So it's easiest if you do this in a few steps, and the prep steps are what takes, they're actually what takes the longest, but I promise you, you will thank me at the end if you take the time to do these prep steps. So by prepping, I mean we're gonna be doing some ironing and getting our pieces folded and ready to go. And then also we need to prep the disc, like I mentioned, that's gonna just involve drawing some lines. So we're gonna start with with that printable um, ruler thing that I told you about. You're gonna cut this out and we're gonna just pin it to the outside edge of your disc, right there along that mold line that you see running around the outside edge. We're gonna pin it here. You can use a couple of pins along the way to help hold it in place. Just press your pins in like halfway so they're easy to remove in a second. Alrighty, and so now that that is in place, we're just gonna take a pen and draw a little line right where each of those lines are on the piece of paper. So I'm just gonna match them right up and draw a line on the foam. Now you'll see that every third line, it's a little bit darker. We need to make a little bit of a longer line at those points. I'll tell you why in a second. And you absolutely do not have to worry about perfection with this. These are just guidelines. Now the point where it starts and ends, that's also going to be one of the longer lines. And just go ahead and remove that. We're done with that. And now you've got all these lines going around. Now because that was kind of sitting along the center there, blocking us from writing right on the middle, I'm just going to go ahead and lengthen out these lines so that I can see them from both sides of the disc. And just keep in mind those longer lines. You wanna make those a little bit longer so you can see them. Alrighty, now the point of those longer four lines, we're gonna actually connect them so that we can find the center of each side of the disc. That's gonna be our starting point when we go to place fabric. So we need our flexible tape measure. And we're just gonna take this and pin it right alongside one of those longer lines. Just like the end of the edge of it is gonna sit right up alongside, pinning it to hold it. And I'm gonna bring it right down through the middle of the disc and to the opposite longer line and pin it there as well. And I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna flip it this way. You wanna just anchor this with your non-writing thumb so that it stays in place. And we're just gonna take a pen again and just connect those lines. Now you could actually go ahead and do the opposite side at the same time. I find it a little bit harder to do this like this because the other end of it's in the way. You could just unpin and start over and do the other side separately but I'm just gonna go for it here. Alrighty, so there is my first line dividing that foam in half. Now let's do the same thing perpendicular so that we can find the center. And that is it for prepping the foam. We now can see clearly where the center point is on each half. Let's go ahead and get the fabric prepped. All right, so what I'm about to show you, we're gonna do for all 12 of the squares. So we're gonna hold this first square with the pattern side facing away, like this. And I'm just gonna take the top and fold it down to meet the bottom, folding it in half and then pressing the top fold. So we're gonna go ahead and take our iron and just press that really nicely to get a good crease up there. Now we're gonna fold it again in half, but the other way. Now this time, we don't wanna press it too much. We wanna press it enough to hold it and for us to see the line, but we don't wanna give it a really, really sharp crease. So I'm just gonna go across it one time, right there along that fold. Now we're gonna, bleh, we're gonna go ahead and unfold it. And now I'm gonna take the left side of this and fold it down right along, so that top folded edge lines up right along that center crease that I had made. And then we're gonna do the same with the right side. So we've basically just formed a triangle shape out of this. 
And you want to try to get that top point to be pretty, pretty nice and pointy up there. And then once you're happy with it, go ahead and just crease that really well right on the top point. Like that. So we didn't, I didn't crease or iron all the way down the sides there, but I did do that top point. And now we're going to take this whole thing again and fold it in half over itself. Like this, and now we've got an even smaller triangle, and I'm going to crease just the the um, angled side of this, so like that. And I'm just going to press that for a second. Again, I'm not pressing that center line. That is it. So this is totally ready to go. We're going to repeat that for all of the fabric pieces, so that we've got them all ready to go. I'll do one more on video for you and then I'll skip ahead to when we've got them all ready. Remember we're starting with the pattern side facing away. And again guys, I've got that cheat sheet for you that shows you all these folds in photos so that you don't have to keep coming back and watching this video to remember how to do this. A very light press on this part. Forming that triangle. I'm pressing just the tip and then folding this whole thing in half and I'm going to press just the angled side. I'm going to turn it over because my iron is over here to the left. My cord doesn't reach very far. <laughs> Alrighty, there is piece number two. I will come back when I've got all 12 of my pieces ready to go. Alrighty, we've got all 12 pieces ready to go. This is going to make it super duper easy to go ahead and create that pinwheel. So let's do it. And by the way, you may find it helpful to lay these out in the order that you want to put them on your pinwheel. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this, there are so many different ways and variations that you could do with these pinwheels. But what I'm going to do is do exactly like I showed you in the beginning. I'm just going to alternate my colors going around the pinwheel. Alrighty, so I've got them all laid out. We're going to start with piece number one here. It's going to open right where you did that last fold, we're going to let this opening sit right over the edge of the piece of foam. And we're going to let the raw edge here line right up along with one of those longer lines that leads us to the center of the ornament. You can start on one side and get it in place and then look at the other side. But one thing you do want to take a look at too before you do any pinning is you want that little lightly creased line that we had in the center to be sitting closely in line with the mold line around the edge of the foam. And once you've got that where you want it, go ahead and take a pin and you're going to pin right up through the top, somewhat close to the raw edge. You don't have to be exact about where you pin it. You just want it to be kind of somewhere near that raw edge. That way it'll get hidden by our next piece. And then going down one side, just aligning that raw edge with the line on the foam. And then coming down maybe to the halfway point here, actually a little above it, like that. We're going to pin this in to hold it. Now do watch the angle of your pin. If you pin straight through, you're going to have a really good chance of poking yourself out the other side, which doesn't feel good. So I've got that angled down like that. And then we're going to flip it over and repeat that on the other side, just checking our alignment with the line on the foam and then pinning down on an angle into the foam to hold it. So now this guy's not going anywhere, which is good. We're going to take, see how the points of this kind of overlap the center a little bit? We're going to take that tip and just flip it up under itself like this. So that the fold that you created is lining up somewhat near the middle of the disc, which you can see because of those lines. So something like that. And we'll go ahead and take a pin and pin in that corner right there to hold it in place. Let's repeat that over here. Same exact thing, just tucking it up under itself and pinning it in place. And guess what? We're done with piece number one. <laughs> we're just going to keep doing that with all of the points. And we're going to go um, in the direction away from the point that you created, okay, because it would be hard to tuck it up under there. So we're just going to come this direction. And then that way, every new piece covers the raw edges and pins of the piece prior, like that. So let's go ahead and lay this right over. And we don't have a long line this time, but that's okay. We're just going to align it with that little short dash line. 
But again, looking at that crease and making sure that it's aligning with the mold line on the foam. Putting this one in first to help anchor it down. And then just lining up this raw edge, and it's not really aligning with a line this time. Again, we don't have a long line here, but you can see which direction it's supposed to go into because really you're ultimately aiming it for the center down here. Okay, so this raw edge is kind of just going right through the center point of the disc. I almost forgot to do my top pin. So right up here, kind of near, I would say that we're probably three quarters of an inch from the first pin. I'm gonna pin it up here to hold it. And again, making sure I've got a really good angle here, angled down into the thick part of the foam. And we'll repeat that and do the same thing over here. Now the reason I kept this pin and this pin kind of up here, I mean, I went a little lower this time, but you just wanna give yourself enough room that you can do this fold. This fold under, and if you pin too low with this pin, you're gonna block yourself from being able to do the fold. So again, doing that tuck under and just aiming for this to be, this little bottom point down here to be kind of near the middle of the disc. Now when you go to pin this one in, you're gonna be pinning through this fabric and you're also likely gonna be pinning a little bit through the previous piece and that's totally fine. Let's do the same thing over here. And it's really gonna depend on what you feel like is comfortable for as far as the direction you hold this thing. You can see I'm kind of flipping it all over the place. <laughs> Depending on which side you're on and what hand you use and everything, it's kind of like, it's different for everybody. But right there is piece number two. So that's pretty easy, right? I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video, do the rest of my pinwheels up until I get to about here, and then I'll show you, I'll slow the video down and show you what we're gonna do to get up the, to get these pinwheels up under the first one. All right, so we have only two more of these pieces to go, and we can see that the next two sections are a little bit covered up by our um, first few pinwheels. So what I'm gonna do is just really gently try to peel back these very first three pinwheels just to get them a little bit out of the way so that I can see those next two lines. And we'll go ahead and do the next one. All right, there's that one, and we got one more to go, and we just kind of have to nudge it up there a little bit, but it really isn't difficult with these other um, spokes peeled up out of the way like that. And see how like right there, it's kind of not going up underneath. If you've got something like a tucking tool or a um, non-serrated, butter knife or something like that. You can kind of use that to just tuck some of that excess fabric up underneath. And it can help too if you want to just pull a little bit out on that first pinwheel just to loosen the pin a little bit. And then you'll be able to get this piece of fabric up under there a little bit easier. Get it pinned into place and then you can just push it all back down. Alrighty, but it's really not too difficult. And once you, whoops, that's not a buzz, that's the pen. Um, once you do it a couple of times, it really becomes pretty easy. We'll just press everything in the middle there and make sure it's all nice and anchored down. And that is it for putting on the fabric. That was really quick and easy, right? Once you get going, it moves really fast. So now we just get to decorate. So I'm gonna start with the hanger. I've got this little piece of jute twine 
it's probably 10 or 11 inches or so. And I'm just gonna put the ends together and tie a knot like that. And then I'm just gonna pin this into um, like between two of the pinwheels. So again, let me just kind of pull back a couple of these. I'm gonna pin it like about that area, like right where those pins are on one of the sections. And actually it can help to sort of stick the pin through the knot first and then stick that down in the pinwheel. Like that. And I'm aiming it so that the raw, the loose edges, the loose ends of the ribbon are gonna go up underneath of the pinwheel. I am gonna trim them a little bit, but first I wanna make sure that I like how this is hanging. So I'm just gonna look at it from the side and just make sure it looks like it's hanging nice. And I like that. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of glue. My glue gun is off to the side, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna stick a little dot of glue right here like that. I got that little glue in there I kind of missed a little bit <laughs> that's okay this is gonna get covered up and then I'll go ahead and snip off some of this and there we go there's the hanger and we can go ahead and decorate the center so I actually just want to put one of these flowers in the middle of mine and then the bumblebee but I really am not happy with this plasticky stuff so I'm gonna snip that off starting at the back I'm just cutting off that part and then that'll make it easy to peel off the parts that's holding it together. So I've got just the flower now and a little hole. I'm actually going to take one of these little flower sequins that we've got, and we've got these, of course, in the Ornament Girls shop, along with the flower and along with the bee, like I talked about earlier. And I just put that on a pin, and I'm gonna stick that right through the middle of my flower. Isn't that cute? And then I'm just gonna pop this right into the middle of my pinwheel. It's gonna help to hide any pins that might be left showing. And then all we've got left is to glue this onto the flower. So you could really put them anywhere. I kinda like how it looks with him like kinda coming up on an angle like this. So I'm gonna stick a little bit of glue on the back. All right, so I've got a little glue on there. And I'm just gonna stick this right down here, I think about there and then I'm gonna press the fabric that's under that area too, just like up underneath just to kind of get him anchored onto that too so he's stuck to the flower petal a little bit and then a little bit on the fabric itself that'll give him a little extra hold I think that is so darn cute <laughs> so what I would do is just flip this over and do the exact same thing on the other side and that's that so I have been addicted to making these lately because they are just so easy. They're so pretty. Like I was saying in the beginning, you can use all kinds of different fabrics and use larger prints than what we're able to use in some of our other patterns. Don't forget to grab that cheat sheet that I've got for you, which is going to lay out all those folding steps for you so you don't have to keep coming back and watching the video over and over again. And of course, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I will help you out the best that I can. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching. Happy ornamenting!